Hi there, this is Andre Hagestad, editor of Oregon Coast Beach Connection. I'm your official beach connector, if you will. And Andre, I hear you ask, are there any creepy and funky tales about Tillamook Rock Lighthouse, that lighthouse offshore from Seaside and Cannon Beach? Why, yes indeed, there are. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you there? Oh yeah, this is the internet, that's right, I can't hear you. So yeah, here it goes. Construction on this blob of rock began back in the 1880s after initial plans were scrapped to put a lighthouse on the fog-prone blind spot area that, that was the uh, top of Tillamook Head at the time. Things did not get off to a good start. The first man to step on the rock to do some surveying drowned, creating an immediate public outcry that perhaps this was not a good idea. Once the uh, initial top was blasted, construction crews had to endure insane conditions, living under soggy tents with enormous waves knocking at them on a constant basis. The crews lived in rotating shifts on the rock, and there were so many injuries in these conditions that men waiting on shore to work there were actually sequestered away from the public and held back from seeing press about what was actually going on on the lighthouse. They were housed in various places along the southern Washington coast and even on a ship anchored offshore for a little while. Once it was built, lightkeepers lived there in shifts as well, four of them at a time, usually a few months in each shift. It was a brutal existence and one keeper reportedly went bonkers from the solitude. A giant winch was used to bring supplies and personnel from visiting ships to the rock, which was a dangerous and unwieldy endeavor even under the best of conditions. They were put inside an object called a breeches buoy, which is essentially a giant pair of pants encircled by a flotation ring, which was attached to cables overhead. Numerous men were really injured doing this. And of course, the place was ripe for ghost stories. It didn't help that local tribes reportedly said it was inhabited by evil spirits. There were rumors of such paranormal tales over the years, including the claims of voices being heard over the din of storms coming from the lens area or other isolated parts of the lighthouse. Sometimes, stories about ghost ships appearing in the fog and drifting past were associated with the place as well, but these usually had foundations in actual events. In fact, there was a ship called the Lupatia that nearly hit the lighthouse in dense fog, but it was warned away just in time. However, it did soon after slam into Tillamook Head, which killed all aboard except for the ship's dog. Now there's a freaky little local legend that you can sometimes still hear a dog howl in the night near Tillamook Head. Another almost spooky tale from the lighthouse comes from a keeper who felt something brush past his face in the dark while lying in bed. All of a sudden, he heard strange footsteps in the pitch black, and after a time, he bolted towards the light switch, arms swinging wildly in an attempt to smack whatever trespasser was there. When he turned on the light, he found only an injured bird that had somehow made its way into his bedroom. The odd footsteps were its broken wing hitting the floor. The lighthouse was decommissioned in 1957 with the last keeper, Oswald Alec, proclaiming, I return thee to the elements. In the 1980s, after numerous failed ownerships, a firm called Eternity at Sea bought the Tillamook Rock Lighthouse property, and for a time it served as a columbarium, which is a place for the ashes of the dead. Rather comically, in a dark way, that firm ran ads in the early 90s offering free satellite TV for life, if you reserved your resting place early. Presumably, they figured if you were making such arrangements, you wouldn't be around too long. You can find out even more funky and maybe spooky tales about the Tillamook Rock Lighthouse at beachconnection.net, and there's also a bunch of them in my own books about Seaside and Cannon Beach called Ultimate Oregon Coast Travel Seaside and Ultimate Oregon Coast Travel Cannon Beach. I've split them up into uh, two separate uh, sets of stories. So yeah, I'm being kind of a pain. You gotta buy both books on Seaside and Cannon Beach to get the full story, but it's worth it. You can find those at beachconnection.net as well, or just search for Ultimate Oregon Coast Travel books. This is Andre from Oregon Coast Beach Connection. I'll see you on the beach and on the net, beachconnection.net that is.